Liberal Democrat leader Nick Clegg closes his party's annual conference this afternoon with his keynote speech, knowing he's sending his party's faithful back to their constituencies to prepare for next year's general election. One man who knows uh, how we're feeling is former leader uh, Lord Ashdown after leading the party during elections in 1992. Uh, morning, Lord Ashdown. Hey, Paul, just drop the Lord. My friend. Could you... Uh, Paddy. Everybody knows, me. everybody knows me as Paddy. And Morning, I Paddy. Lord, so yeah. don't well, we thought we'd give a, you know, yeah, give you a bit otherwise of Otherwise you get not angry letters, I understand. <laughs> but that's probably People who think I've not treated you correctly, which <laughs> yeah, would be... Absolutely, yeah. But, I mean, you do. You've been in his shoes uh, and, and, and in a very similar position, you know, in, in regards to a sort of share of the vote at the moment. How, how do... How does Nick Clegg galvanise the Liberal Democrats? How does yep. he galvanise his share of the vote into a, a, a really usable, uh, usable share of the vote at the next election? Well, I mean, let's let's start with that. I mean, I, actually, Nick is well above what I went into general elections with, and we doubled our number of MPs in '97. So I think the prospects there are very good. Um, and by the way, I think you know, he and and Vince Cable, and we're now beginning to be a team in depth led by Nick. Um, have I? really won a great deal of respect in the country for telling it as it is. Yeah, I used to say to the party that uh, an ounce of respect for the party and the public is worth a ton of policy. And I think they're really building up a lot of respect as the one people who are prepared to tell the truth. Uh, you're right. I mean, I did some hairy things in my life, uh, Paul, <laughs> when I was at the Royal Marines and the Special Boat Service, but nothing as hairy, I can tell you, as the What goes on to us? What goes on to us? No, at the end of the conference speech, a couple of thousand delegates, um, I'd rather have done anything than that. He's got to send us away with a spring in our step and a song in our hearts uh, for the election ahead. And I've watched this guy. I think he's a rare political talent. And my guess is he'll do it in spades. Uh, he's got a problem, though, hasn't he? Because everybody knows you, but according to a recent survey, 36% of the electorate don't know who he is. Come on, uh, Paul. You guys, I, mean, I could almost set my clock by the fact that whenever a new leader, by the way, any party comes in, um, the press, why not? You have a good bit of fun with it. Nick Brown has said, do you know who he is? And of course, nobody does. I remember when I was leader of the party, I think for a couple of years, I went down to catch a taxi at uh, a Victoria Station in London, and somebody said, yeah, there, look, there's that, there's that snooker player, Steve Higgins. <laughs> uh, so I can tell you this, that all that changes overnight in the election. And uh, I, I actually think Nick has got a great deal of respect amongst those who do know him. And the more people do, and by the end of the election, everybody will, the more people will uh, really like what they see against a broken-backed government and a uh, prime minister has completely lost his way. And Mr Cameron, who's perpetrating a contract on us, uh, that the Tories have somehow changed their spots, which they haven't, the more people see him, the more they'll like him. If it's a contract, he appears to be doing fairly well, though, according to the opinion yeah, polls. Because, yeah, because what people are saying at present, they're not really thinking too deeply about politics. They're actually saying, don't want that, Mr. Brown. Better be the other guy, Mr. Cameron. But uh, what's really interesting, Paul, and, and uh, you're a veteran, you know how uh, these things are, you just compare the enthusiasm that was there for Tony Blair six months out of, uh, up from the election in 1997, and the complete lack of enthusiasm for Mr. Cameron. I mean, they may be saying it, but they're saying it because they can't think of anybody else at the moment. That'll change at the election, I promise. You'd be better with Vince Cable as your leader, though, wouldn't you? He's the heavy hitter. He's the man pulling the strings, isn't he? No. Uh, I mean, actually, I don't think we'd be better than Vince, and I think Vince understands he wouldn't be better than Vince. He's a very, very important part of the team. I can remember you guys, you remember, when I was a uh, leader, saying, I uh, just a one-man team, it's Paddy Ashdown, no one else. Now you're complaining because there's other people. This is a <laughs> team in depth. Uh, uh, actually, I think Nick is an outstanding leader of the party. Vince Cable, too, is an outstanding asset to the party. Uh, and uh, we need to use that. I mean, if you look at the Lib Dem team, by the way, you know, you've got uh, Nick, you've got Vince Cable, arguably the most trusted person on the economy in British politics, far ahead of the Tories. You've got uh, very wise people like Ming Campbell on foreign affairs. I do a bit on defence and foreign affairs myself. It's a good team, I think, they're beginning to assemble now. But Nick is the leader and he's the right person to do it. Yeah, you've got some headlines this week as well. Uh, you, you've grabbed some headlines. But, I mean, some of the things you've announced are going to be very, very difficult to, to push through, aren't they? I mean, you're going you're gonna to tax people with million-pound houses and, and various other things. How are you going to sell this to the electorate? Well, look, you, you, you tell me which you'd prefer to see. In, these crisis, in this economic crisis, when we have to raise money, do you want to see the Tory party who give, are going to give the rich more tax breaks to make them richer? 
or us beginning to make sure we have a taxation system that's fairer. I know which I think the public will have. These are hard times, Paul, and we're not ducking that. Tories are. Labour would rather pretend that nothing had happened at all. Uh, but the reality is these are tough times, and if we're going to fill this hole, we're going to have to pay, and I think it's far, far better. Uh, that uh, that uh, we have a progressive system of taxation. That's what our taxation is based on in this country. And when people look at it, I think they'll look for fair fairness, and they'll think this is not unfair. And I know Afghanistan is is a country close to your heart. Uh, where do you stand on that? And uh, what should be done? What should we be doing now, Paddy? Well, look, it's a. I mean, I don't know how long you've got, Paul, but it's two a minutes. Complex but issue. that'll be fine. <laughs> it's a complex issue and requires a, a com. Not there isn't a one-shot solution. Isn't more troops? So here's what needs to happen. By the way, we are failing, and unless we change strategy success is not the likely outcome. One, the international community has to get its act together. For seven years there hasn't been a single plan. Our young men are dying out there because our politicians can't get their act together and come up with a single strategy. And that's the underlying real problem. Two, we need to have a legitimate government in Kabul that has the respect of the Afghan people. I think these elections have undermined that. We've got to decide what we do about that. Three, we need to support our troops on the ground and the government is trying to fight this war half-heartedly. You can't win a war on half horsepower. Our troops are busting their guts out there, but I don't think our government is. Mr. Brown should be saying this is the nation's number one priority and we'll bend every sinew to support our troops and make sure we win. And then you also need a political solution to this, which includes a regional context in which you can bring in the neighbours and a proper political solution. You don't win this by the bomb and the bullet. You win it by a political construct. And finally, you know, once we get them on the military back foot, we've got to be prepared to talk to the Taliban. We had to do it with the IRA. Uh, I lost friends in Belfast to the IRA, but it was necessary in the end that we say to these guys, if you put aside the gun and the bomb and follow your legitimate aims through the ballot box and the Constitution, you'll be part of the system, not part of the killers. Mm. Paddy, thank you for coming on this morning. Much appreciated. Good luck Great to Nick to Clegg you, this Paul. afternoon. Uh, many people regard you as the best Prime Minister we never had. Without blowing yeah, well, smoke. People of impeccable judgment. Without blowing smoke, yeah. Uh, uh, Paddy, thank you very much All for best. coming on this morning. Uh, Paddy Ashton, a man who talks uh, a lot of sense and uh, uh, some of it could do to be uh, distributed around the corridors of power at the moment, I believe.